I didn't get a video out yesterday, but I did ask in my community tab what kind of videos you wanted to see coming up on the channel. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more daily Call of the Wild content. Well, except yesterday. But one of the things you guys really wanted to see was me ranking the reserves from what I feel is the worst to the best. So that is what we're going to be doing for this one. And the reason why we're starting here on Te Avaroa, I've actually made an entire video about this reserve. In my opinion, this is the worst reserve we currently have. First of all, I feel the animals are lackluster, but I don't want to get too much into it because I made an entire video a few days ago about it. But in general, the only good things for me with the Avaror is that I now have a new spot where I can hunt fallow deer and the seeker deer are kind of nice. Everything else I can either hunt on other maps or they just don't really mean anything to me. Um, the feral goats were a huge letdown for me unfortunately because I kind of expected them to be somewhat similar to what they were in classic and uh, unfortunately that wasn't the case. However by buying Te Avaroi, you get access to the 303 rifle which is a super good uh, 4 till 8 rifle so if you don't want to be buying the smoking barrels weapon pack for the uh, M1 or for the muscle loader then getting Te Avaroi, so you can host it in multiplayer and actually getting um, access to the 303 could definitely be a viable thing as well but in my opinion i don't use the 303 and then um, yeah i pretty much just hunt fellow deer on teavaroa so this is why i rank this reserve the worst one in the game number eight on my list is gonna be hirschfelden Hirschfelden is one of the two original maps in the game. It's been around for a long time and even back in the days when it was only this and Leighton Lake, I spent probably 97% of my time on Leighton Lake. It's not even because the map itself is bad, it's that my style of hunting where I'm running and gunning a lot does not really work. There's too much dense vegetation, too much close forest areas and such where you just all of a sudden you end up spooking a ton of animals that you had no idea is there. I know that it really um, has a place for a lot of bow hunters, but if I just don't like sneaking around as much as a lot of other people. I like to just run around and see if I then spook something, and if I spook something of interest, I would like to just be able to settle down, look out around for a little while while the animals return to their zones. But most of the times I won't even see the animals uh, disappear from the zones. Also, it was the first map where we had the, uh, well, the only map we have the Canada Goose on. And it's at best a little broken hunting the, <laughs> the goose for the most part. And um, it seems like the collar doesn't even work these days. But that is what it is. But the, the animal selection in itself is actually pretty good i think on his it, it's just a style of hunting that really does not fit with what i want to do with the game because it was the first map with red deer roe deer fallow deer fox and those are species that i'm familiar with from uh, here in denmark as well so i think the selection is really good but the environment is what really does it for me with the map and, and this is why i actually feel bad about putting it all the way down here is that i in my opinion his film is probably the second prettiest map in the entire game it's just my hunting experience and his film that really does not work very well unfortunately but it has some really iconic species the fallow deer and the red deer which now can be hunted on other maps as well the only reason that i really keep coming back to his film is the fact that i still haven't gotten a european bison the game has been out for four years and i've never shot a european bison that probably should be a testament to how little I end up playing this map in general. And on to number seven on my list, which is going to be Quattro Colinas. Quattro Colinas came out a few years ago and uh, it introduced a new feature to us, which was the uh, climbing goat kind of thing. With the Ibex introduced to the map, it um, definitely brought something new. It also has the wolves, which we know from Yukon at the time when it came out. It And that's a really good thing. I like, that is probably why this one is edging out Hirschfelden, simply because 
in my opinion, the red tier hunting is probably one of the best places in the entire game. If you go early morning and check out these three lakes up here in the top right corner, you'll find red deer galore, you'll find the mouflon, and um, you'll find a quite a bit of roe deer drinking. And that's a good thing. Then, with having the ibex, and this is probably why I'm going to rank it this low, is it just seems to be the same everywhere you go on the map. If you go early morning, you're going to find the uh, Mouflon drinking. But as soon as the drink time for the Ibex starts, you have the entire map scattered with Ibex. And in my opinion, yeah, I know it's four different ones, but essentially it's the same one who's just went to a different hairdresser. And I, I don't know, it just feels... It got boring to play very fast because it's essentially four of the animals seems to be the same thing they're acting the same way they're doing basically the same thing and uh yeah they have li these little guys as well the environment is kind of nice there is a lot of open shooting gallery ranges and especially if you keep just hunting waters there is some really really good spots where you can make a crap ton of money as well but as i said it's the animal selection here that probably ends up not really ranking it higher but first of all we have the red deer and so many other reserves the ibex is just too much of the same thing the mouflon yeah they were kind of nice and then we had the wolves being a good addition but they still mess a lot with the hunt of other animals and i know some people really don't like that number six on the list is going to be the medved tiger the cold siberia map uh, it's actually not even that bad of a map and i've had a lot of fun hunting lynx on the map recently as well it is very good for being a shooting gallery at most places if you just want to do a uh, lake and river hunting there's going to be some awesome spots especially this one down here where you can just basically go out to the middle of the lake if you set up a tripod out here in the middle and you go early morning 5 till 7 a.m and you're going to have the musk deer the uh, brown bear and the reindeer all drinking here you have a shooting gallery like no other the map itself is um honestly a little hard on the eyes to play when it's a uh, very very bright and um, it is actually some pretty decent um species on the map i do like the reindeer a lot um it was nice to have another place where we could hunt moose this was the third map that came to the game um and the first one to uh, introduce the uh, reindeer where yukon later came and gave us caribou and i'm a big fan of the reindeer i've always been especially because they also have that very special place in my heart with having gotten a uh, diamond piebald scoring reindeer way back in the days and there's so much nostalgia to me on this map but in it's just a, a super nice map to hunt if you just want to run around and uh, blast down some animals and you just don't really care too much about um hunting in a specific way but you just want to get some kills medved tiger definitely can be super interesting to hunt there is a few areas as well with the very dense vegetation and such i mean for me i basically never have i think i've seen like 20 uh wild boars on the map because i don't really hunt their drink time and they hang out a lot in the uh, more dense areas than uh, where i usually run around a lot so uh, for open area shooting this map is super good i mean just if you sit out here look the entire way around in the early morning hours there is going to be animals everywhere and this is the case with quite a few uh this lake right here this lake right here uh, with this area and then there's this hidden lake down here as well, where just in this bottom right corner, if you spent like 20, 30 minutes in this area, you could basically fill your bank in no time if you have a big game rifle. Um, it's, yeah, I think it is a decent map. It's definitely middle of the pack. And uh, I recently got my diamond links. So uh, now I have all of the diamonds off of Medved Tiger as well. But I still find myself wanting to come back once in a while to hunt it. And on to number five, the first one in the top five is gonna be Parque Fernando. Parque Fernando, when that came out, I'm pretty sure they, that Parque Fernando came out before Alliance, and this was the first time around we saw interaction between animals, where the pumas are gonna mess with your hunt big time. If uh, you see them anywhere, you can guarantee yourself that they have tried to make any other animal in the entire area try to flee. Which was a pretty cool mechanic, but what really takes it away from me with uh, Parque Fernando was that um, we got a new map where we could hunt red deer. 
and me not liking hunting on Hirschfelden very much, then getting the opportunity to hunt red deer somewhere else was super good. I really like that. And I actually kind of like the animal selection a lot as well. Um, there is only the axis deer and the black buck that I don't really care too much for. Um, and everybody just have a ton of diamond axis deer after the mess up. But uh, that is what it is. But I really like hunting on um, Parque Fernando also because we have the very aggressive water buffaloes who will try to mess up your day if you're just walking around and ending up spooking something. They go very aggressive very quick. And I think that's a super cool and interesting feature and that definitely keeps the, the map interesting and fun to hunt. We also, first time we saw the mule deers um, and whatever they have become now with the racks, I don't know. Um, let's not even get into that. But in general, I... Another thing that really took home Parque Fernando for me was it was the first uh, map where I set out to do the missions really, really fast because this was the first time we would ever get an idea of what a trophy lodge would be like in this game. And uh, it's not the trophy lodge just like, you know, where you can go in and put stuff, different stuff on different plaques or something. No, there is actually a set lodge in the game and you unlock this by doing missions. This is the very last of the main story missions where you have to shoot a diamond of each animal to get them up on your wall in here. And this was huge. I had so much fun because first of all I wanted to get these missions completed because now it actually meant something to go for diamonds and rares and uh, this was before any of the uh, Springfield Manor or uh, Saseka Safari got released and it just made the map very interesting to hunt. In general I like the species and this map also really fits my style of hunting very well because you just run towards water and if you should end up scaring something away I mean down here is a really good example. If I spook something in this area it's all gonna run over here and be gonna be running around on this area right here where i'll get to spot is there anything that i really need to worry about and um, then get to decide if i should stop running and just sit down and have them come back to their zones and our number four is gonna have to be yukon valley which to me seems insane because if you'd asked me like four months ago it would have been a definite number three or even number two on the list but uh, some of the other maps have just got a little more to them and I'm going to go into that when we get to these. But Yukon Valley, in my opinion, by far... Oh, the, oh wow. Am I going to do this? Um, by far the prettiest map in the entire game. The only thing that even comes close to it is... Uh, can you die? Come on. Thank you. Is uh, <laughs> I love when recording goes like this. Uh, let's just pick up a goal scoring level 5 a moose right here. <laughs> Unfortunately, he wasn't big enough with that estimate. I actually did believe he was going to make it. But uh, the only map that really comes close to it in terms of sheer beauty is Hirschfelden. But what really got me hooked on Yukon Valley as well is the changing weather dynamics where you once in a while... Everything is just going to get covered in snow. And then definitely also having the wolves. The first time we saw wolves and pack hunting predators on a map as well has really been a good thing as well. That has kept the map so fun to play. Whenever you start hearing that growling, you just know, oh my god, I'm about to be in trouble. And that has really kept the map fresh for me. In terms of the other animals on the map, I'm, there is not really anything. I mean, we have bears on so many other. We have the European bison, now we get the plains bison. We have moose on other maps. But the wolves itself just carries the dang map so high up the list. It is so much fun to just have that growl. You hear them approach and you'd be like, oh my god, how many are there? And then all of a sudden you're surrounded by like 12 wolves and you're in deep trouble that has definitely been very very interesting the style of hunting on this map there is a lot of water and uh, river on the map and that really does fit me just run to the water spot around see what's at the banks and continue on to the next one so in that term it really fits it well and of course if you are looking to buy any dlc map always buy yukon valley first because 
it gives you the access to be able to uh, pick up the uh, 300 canning magnum in your store it does cost money but it is arguably the best big game rifle in the game and obviously that is a huge draw to the map as well number three silver ridge peaks initially when this map came out I didn't even like it very much because it had really short drink times and the animals uh, in the early morning you're just dealing with having mountain lion everywhere that's going to scare off any of the other animals drinking in that specific time zone however the map has grown on me huge and it is because it is by far the best map for streamers to play there is constant actions no matter where you're gonna travel pretty much in the drink time of any of the animals you're gonna find an abundance of animals so i've spent so much time on the map that i've actually grown to like it and um, especially going for the bighorn as well that took me forever to get a bighorn diamond that has made me appreciate the map even more and um, my favorite map or the favorite am blah, 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 the favorite animal yeah i'm gonna leave that in i'm sorry if i just woke you up <laughs> and my favorite animal on the map is of course the mountain goat i wanted to say feral goat but then they were let down the turkey was introduced with this map as well um i'm not much of a turkey hunter but they're there and then once in a while you get to shoot them down sometimes you take them down with a 300 sometimes you take them down with a 22 and sometimes you just don't take them down at all because why bother i never tried to hunt them with the decoys because i know they were uh, bucked af when uh, they came out initially i haven't done the missions on this map yet either but i don't really feel like i've had the need to either because there is just constant action you can always go around and shoot a uh, bunch of uh, either bighorn and mountain goat in the early morning hours if you go just before noon ish you have the uh, mountain goat drinking everywhere and if you go in the plains area down in the southeast you have pronghorn you have elk you have mules you have the bison and overall i mean this is a really bad showcasing but i've also taken them the time of day where not really anything is drinking but uh, the map just presents itself as uh, being pretty so that is one of the reasons why i enjoy playing it so much is because you have constant action it is also known as a shooting gallery it is probably the best map in the game to go out and make a, a pretty penny on really quick as well so if you're looking to do that bring out your m1 your 303 go shoot the mountain lion the mountain goat the uh, bighorn and just uh, go ham in those areas especially the uh, mountain lion gives you a lot of money if you go six to eight in the morning you'll find them drinking at pretty much any lake up in the uh, higher altitudes and it just it has a nice feel to it it's warm map to play um run around and it's usually sunny and um, yeah, it, it just has a nice vibe to it. Whenever I run around in this area, I always be like, I would love a golf course. I would love to play on a golf course made in some area like this, or uh, possibly even just a skiing resort. But there's just so many th times where I just be like, hmm, that could be cool. I don't think it quite ranks near Yukon and Hirschfelden and how pretty it is, but it is definitely one of the prettier maps in the game as well and number two the Leighton lake our very first north american map introduced into the game it's it's iconic to me it has a lot of awesome species unfortunately a lot of them has had um, they actually looked better pre true rack but having stuff like whitetail blacktail moose Rosewell elk i just don't see any reason why i shouldn't put this as one of the most hunted ones it is the map i would imagine it's the map that i spent second most time hunting on in total as well simply because the environment is good doing the river runs are awesome there's some really good lakes uh, everywhere around on the map as well and then just having a variety of awesome deer species is really really good and uh, of course if they're working if they would be working i don't know what the uh, state of the uh, current grade ones are but we keep saying level four and five whitetails now being very overweight and it just spells uh, bad for me um definitely having something to hunt that is so rare has a huge draw to it as well i don't know if i would still rank it number two if any of the other maps had the grade one on it as well but that is just something really cool as well but having 
this been around since release and probably one of the ones with the best animal diversity whenever it comes to the species and such it's a really really good and fun map to hunt and as i said it really fits my style of hunting as well running the rivers or running around to the different lakes and just checking them out we also got the ducks introduced to the map and uh, they seem to be a little weird here and there but they're here right and i think it has to be up there because the total amount of time I've played on this is a lot. I've got 3000 hours in total in the game and I've probably spent five, six, seven hundred hours of them on late and way back in the days. And uh, yeah, I've had some really, really fun hunts here. I have some uh, fun memories and it's just there is just a lot of nostalgia to the map itself as well. But then um, the hunting on the map is good and I love hunting the Rosewald Elks and um, i loved hunting the white tails and the black tails a little more before the true rack same with the rosies honestly but um, it is what it is and it's still a very very enjoyable time running around i feel like this is probably one of the maps as well where the animal population is probably best as well because you're not overwhelmed with animals but there is animals on the map you don't run around for long and not finding anything so that also definitely has something, but you don't get them thrown in the face the entire time. And what can probably no surprise to anyone if you've spent just a, any bit of time on my channel ever, you know that my favorite map in the entire game is the Vohonga Savannah. The Vohonga Savannah just offered so much new to the game when it first came out. First of all, getting an African reserve, something we never got in the Hunter Classic, has just been something that was super cool. I feel like the animal selection out here is really cool as well. Um, introducing the Gemsbok back in the day kind of messed up a lot of things for other animals because it started messing with the spawns of other animals and you see Gemsbok everywhere. But um, yeah, having the Kuru, the Springbok with doing their pronking um, and just having a huge herd of wildebeest where you hear the rolling thunder once in a while. And uh, of course, not to forget the lions. The lions got introduced, and I think for that reason alone, this is my favorite map in the entire game. I love hunting lions. I've spent so much time trying to get a uh, albino lion. I got two pre-large era, but then when the larges hit, it took me more than a year of hunting, and I hunted lions hardcore for a year trying to get an albino one, and it's just uh, so fitting for my run-and-gun playstyle, because all of the animals, there is... Quite a little, if we take a, a quick look on the map here, there is very little water on the entire map, but you're gonna find a quite high density of animals at any of the lakes whenever there is the drink times. And uh, as long as you don't go around noon, which is the uh, lion drink time, then you're not gonna have the lions be messing with the animals and trying to make them flee very often. So you get to see a lot of the different animals a lot, and I like that. And of course, having the Cape Buffalo as well, the first of the buffaloes introduced into the game as well that really want to f you up if uh, you do not pay attention it's just been so much fun and they're tanks man they're they're rough they're not easy to take down so if you all of a sudden get charged by three four or five of those you're in for a good dance and that definitely has its appeal to me as well um i really like the map i think it is super fun to hunt uh and you get the 470 nitro with it whenever you buy uh Vohonga savannah it's not that important if you have the 338 or you have the 300 then don't even bother with the 470 unless you have excess amount of money um but yeah this is my ranking of the different maps i would love to hear yours in the comments below and uh, yeah as always thank you so very much for watching